George Pascoe Watson, who's a partner at Shillings and a former political editor of The Sun, is with me now. George, great to have you this morning. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, what do you think uh, that Jeremy Hunt is likely to do on Wednesday? Because we had lots of test balloons floated over the last couple of days, haven't we? Lots of things in the papers, unnamed sources and so on. You're familiar with all of that from your time as political editor of The Sun, of course. What do you think will land? Morning, Peter. And uh, I, I think it's great uh, that I'm some sort of a, a shoe in for Rachel uh, and Jeremy Hunt. So, so that's that's great for me. You're you're a worthy a worthy substitute. <laughs> Not quite the same deal. But I think uh, you hit the nail on the head there. This is the point. A few days before an autumn statement, a major uh, moment in the road towards a general election. There are only two or three major moments left for this chancellor for this government. Um, and of course, there's a huge briefing war underway. And even as you and I are speaking right now, the Chancellor uh, and his team are inside the Treasury working away, uh, putting uh, lines through ideas, welcoming other ideas, kicking them around. And why? Because this is the moment when you are trying to make the very most of your ideas, the biggest bang for your buck. So what are the ideas that are going to play well with the audience that you really want to win at a general election. And also, what are the things you can put in there, the little um, bombs that you can put uh, in, in, in the play to make Rachel Reeves and Keir Starmer on the Labour side uh, think, what would we do? Because this is... And, and also, what would they get rid of as well, George? is fascinating, isn't it? Because Rachel Reeves this morning failed to rule out that if the, they say, oh, isn't it terrible that the Tories want to perhaps, we don't know, but perhaps cut inheritance tax, the inevitable question is, if they do that, will you then scrap it? And Rachel Rees feel to uh, commit to that. And that's right. So from, from a Labour perspective, they have to think very carefully about any commitment that they make now before they, if they win at a general election, because the Conservatives will use that to hang a weight around their neck. You are making unfunded commitments with taxpayers' money that we wouldn't make. So this is all part of the game. Now, what I think is going to happen, I think the, the central thing for our listeners and viewers this morning is the government feels that it's halved inflation. And that means it now has the opportunity to focus on growth. And we all know that the number one thing that, that has to happen, not just in the UK economy, but in the economies around the world, is economic growth. We've run out of money. We're not making enough money. Uh, I'm not talking about profit necessarily. I'm talking about revenue. We need to make money. That's how we get the world-class public services that we want and we've come to rely on. More people are growing old, living longer. Cost of medicines, cost of treatment, the cost of everything is going up. So how do we do that? Well, he thinks that cutting taxes will generate some greater investment from the private sector. And I'm talking about business taxes here. What I don't think that will happen, I do not think that personal taxes, income tax uh, and national insurance will be cut. I think that's a nice idea, which has been floated in, in the newspapers this morning, uh, and it's very attractive to a lot of Conservatives. But I think it's highly unlikely it will happen. It certainly costs a lot of money, and we talk we talk about this sort of fiscal headroom, this idea, of course, Jeremy Hunt won't know exactly how much that is. He got a big a report from the Office of Budgetary Responsibility only on Friday they do these updates. So it's only really now, this weekend, that he knows how much money he's got to play with. Isn't that right? Well, that's absolutely right. And the money is very, very important. You know, how much headroom you've got is the critical question. But the other critical question is the thing about cutting uh, na national insurance and particularly income tax is it is likely to be inflationary. So having just spent a long time trying to get inflation down by raising interest rates, uh, making the cost of borrowing more expensive, now if you put uh, more money in people's pockets they'll go and spend it and that will create inflation again and inflation is the big weapon so i think he's got to finally uh, dance through this really tricky environment he's trying to attract voters he's trying to say we're true conservatives he's trying to remind conservative mps that he's one of them but he's also in danger of stoking inflation again which would really destroy the conservative chances at the next election so and actually really some, some, somewhat out and somewhat ironically, George, inflation could, in theory, I certainly hope it doesn't, but in theory it could go up to over the halfway mark to what it was. And actually on the 4th of January, uh, Rishi Sunak may not, may not actually have that in his back pocket. It's a, it's a fascinating one. I wonder if I could ask you about another political story that is out today. It's on the front page of the Sunday Telegraph. 
about Sadiq Khan allegedly misleading pu the public over the benefits of ULEZ. We also have a story saying that £65 million of taxpayers' money has had to be spent on ambulances by the NHS to bring them up to a ULEZ standard. I mean, this is really quite serious in terms of what Sadiq Khan is accused of. Listen, we're in a general election year coming up uh, for the nation, but Sadiq Khan is also in a London mayoral election year 2024 uh, and i think this is a great example of electioneering uh, uh political uh, fighting because if you actually look at the sunday telegraph story what they've got is a leaked memo from the advertising standards of, uh, agency which is not the final findings and it basically says on a technicality we think that you've uh, got things wrong here and it's been misleading now i it, I, I can absolutely imagine this is the sort of thing which is yet to play out. It's not their final report. What is true, I have to say, whether you're uh, in favour of ULES or not, this uh, claim does not challenge the science uh, of, of the reporting. But what it does show is this is going to be a really uh, powerful, really strong and really potent battle mm. for the London mayoral crowd. This is the first time the London voters will be going to a first-past-the-post election. And, and Sadiq Khan has done very well in, in the past, but this time, the way that the election happens is different. And I think that's a cause for concern for City Hall. Uh, and it's given the Conservatives the opportunity, they think, to fight on the question of climate change, ULES, and particularly their audience uh, it would be my old readers on the sun, white van man, people who rely on their transport to get around this great city. Uh, and I think that's where the battle lines are drawn. Do you th we need to be careful, of course, we remember that 82% of our viewers and listeners don't live in London, so we don't want to concentrate on London issues for too long. But, of course, one thing that could uh, absolutely keep people's uh, attention from Aberdeen to Belfast to Cardiff to uh, Folkestone is whether Jeremy Corbyn might run for Mayor of London. What do you think? Yes, and I think that all possibilities are open right now. If he was to be able to find the right uh, backers, I think he would be uh, very keen to do so. And of course, that would be catastrophic for uh, a, a, a mayor, uh, a Labour mayor in London, because it would split the vote there. I mean, all of us have to think wherever we are in the UK that uh, democracy is being put down to uh, regional areas and more mayors are coming forward and more cities are being given mayoral status. Uh, and it is an important thing that these people have real power. You only have to look at what uh, Sadiq uh, has done here in the in, in London about ULEZ and, and, and a range of other measures. It does have an impact. Uh, and it's right that we understand what drives mayors because it could happen uh, in your back garden as well. There's also a story in the uh, Sunday Times today about the small boats crisis and the, uh, a possibility that thousands of illegal migrants in limbo, they're in limbo because of the illegal migration bill which went through a few months ago. They were meant to be immediately repatriated. That hasn't happened and they may get an amnesty. This is a, a small but significant section of people who have come in in the last few months. I mean, the, it appears to me that the government migration policy and uh, system is just an absolute chaos at the moment. I'm afraid there's no other way of describing it. And, uh, of course, it's taken this recent Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, out of her job. Uh, it's now on James Cleverley's uh, to-do list. I don't think I've seen in 30 years, Peter, any Home Secretary really successfully uh, grappling with this issue. And the issue, let's be honest, is because of the turmoil in the world. Britain is seen as a very, perhaps the most attractive a uh, place for people to come uh, with all this extraordinary upheaval. We have poverty, hunger, wars. We have terrible uh, nightmares going on around the world. As I said to you earlier, there's not enough money to pay for uh, the, the world that we've come to expect. And the problem seems to be ending up with us. And it is almost impossible, I think, for any government uh, to have a uh, you know, nod to, to the European uh, uh, HCR and stay with an immigration problem tackled. You can't do both. One or the other is the is the problem. And of course, this Conservative government doesn't want uh, to leave the ECHR uh, for reasons it's best known to itself. Uh, and therefore, we are stuck with the problem. And in the end, we haven't got enough places. Uh, we're having to use taxpayers' money to put uh, asylum seekers up in hotels. Uh, we just haven't got the money to keep on doing that. So somebody has to make a decision, uh, a big radical decision, to let some amnesty happen. And of course, your listeners, your readers, your viewers are going to be uncomfortable with that, yeah. uh, and, and understandably.
Absolutely. George, thank you very, very much indeed. That's George Pascoe Watson, their partner at Shillings and uh, former political editor of The Sun.